Hey guys, welcome back to Kiwi Classics and Customs. Wanted to bring you this gorgeous little 57 Ford Thunderbird today. It's an absolutely gorgeous car. Factory twin four barrels, power steer, power brakes, power windows. You name it, it's got it. And it's been exceptionally well restored. Which we'll show you a little bit more detail on that later. Um, but it's got all the factory markings from it would have had it would have had coming down the assembly line. It's just top notch stuff. But for my next trick I'm gonna try and get in it because they're a little tight. And we'll pull it in the shop. Barry, you can probably <laughs> tell you why it's here. Uh, it's got a really bad oil leak. It appears to be coming from the oil pump, that external oil pump they have. Uh, and yeah, Barry can probably catch that as I back up. It's bad. Okay, so we're about to put it in the air. I thought you'd like to see, you guys would like to see under the hood, because this is really special. This is super, super nice. You know, it's got the correct battery in it. Everything's been powder coated and shiny, and yeah, the factory brake booster here, because there simply wasn't room to have a booster up on the firewall like most cars do these days. So you've got a remote booster, you've got your power steering, uh, they've even, like all the wiring is factory type wiring with these little plugs and it's all just immaculate. It's got, it's got the little paint stamps reproduced on it here. You know, the paint OK 507, little codes. It's got the same thing down on the inner fender over there. But yeah, the Fomoco hoses. Now, I don't know, somebody may have put those that on there, but I suspect that's actually a, like a reproduction uh, you know, copying the Fomoco logos on it. Air Cleaner's got the little, the correct little factory sticker on it. The heater blower box has got all the right stickers on it. Um, and even just what's even, hot, the clips holding the wiring lumen, the, you know, like over here, these little clips holding the harness in. That's all as it was when it rolled off the assembly line. So, yeah, I'm, um, I'm pretty impressed with this car. It's hard to f fault it. It's really hard to fault it. Uh, and you just don't see them like that. Like, this is one of those no expense spares re restoration. It takes a huge amount of time and patience to get every little detail just so. But anyway, that's enough about that. Let's have a quick look underneath, see if we can't figure out where this oil leak's coming from. Okay, so here we are underneath. Quick look at the oil pump. Clearly there's plenty of oil here. You can actually see it dripping still from just when we drove it on. Now, my initial thoughts were it's gonna be one of these gaskets in this external oil pump. But actually, if you look a little closer, and you look up a little higher, you've got an oil drip coming out of the oil sender unit. And that's actually the culprit. It's, it's lit where the, the steel on the side of it is crimped over, swaged over to hold the plastic part in. It's coming out of there fast, dropping down onto the oil pump, coming off the oil pump, and it, for all money, looks like, oh, the oil pump's leaking, oh, just, you know, fix that. But it's not, it's just like a $10 oil pressure switch. Uh, so we're gonna switch that out, and that's gonna fix our big oil leak. But look, while we're under here, let's have a look around. This, this is, it's worth a second look, man. It's, you can see all the floors had as much, the underneath of the floor has had as much attention to it as probably the top. Um, you know, it's just gorgeous up here. Uh, you know, the, the carrier is 
painted the correct colour, you know, they've got that sort of uh, red rust oxide compared to the axles. It's got all the factory correct exhaust on it. Um, all the, you know, all the e-brake cables are new. Brand new tank. Uh, all the exhaust is held up with the correct mounts. Um, there's, you've even got like serial numbers painted. I don't know the serial numbers, but there's like ID numbers, part numbers painted on the chassis rail. Yeah, even with a date stamp on it. Like it's upside down, but it's meant to be like that. They were stacked upside down when they when they were getting ready to be assembled. So this was 12 to 1956. Uh, kind of cool. Again, all the clips. It's all the correct clips holding everything on. Um, they've got little bits of tape around here. That's actually meant to be there. That They taped the body shims on. So as they lowered the body on, the shims wouldn't fall out and then someone's trying to scrabble around underneath and get them. And so they actually taped with little quarter inch wide masking tape, taped the shims on. Yeah. This is uh, just <laughs> superb guys, it really is. I don't know whether it's gonna actually come through on camera, just how nice this is. But, and the, the customer actually, it's gonna be for sale very shortly. We've got to fix that little oil leak and it's going on the market and I believe He's hoping for around that 75k mark, which I'm telling you now, guys, if you had a really, like a pretty good Survivor Thunderbird, you couldn't come close to restoring it to this level um, for 75 grand. Not even close. Uh, I mean, you know, the gloss, just the gloss finish on the chassis it is better than quite a few of the cars we get through here on the outside, you know, like. It's, the paint job on the chassis is like to be admired yeah. but anyway that's enough raving so I just thought you'd enjoy it and uh, I know I am it's a um, fabulous little car alright well we're about to go home and see you tomorrow take care